somehow she was okay and able to tell me exactly what it was she saw. She describes this light blue 2000 Toyota Camry. The caller, the tipster, this individual by the name of Sam Dietman, had told our tipster during a bar conversation drinking that he had shot and killed a person. Sam Dietman did have some assault cases, and Dietman had been named in two arson fires. It's a concern for everybody. We needed to try to find out where he is. As I'm watching, I watch this light blue four-door Toyota Camry pull in the parking lot. And the hair on the back of my neck stood up and I said, that's the exact vehicle that Ashley Armenta has described to us. The person we know and identify as Sam Beatman gets out of the passenger side of the vehicle. We're able to get a license plate and identify the car owner as a Dale S. Hausner. Based on these conversations, it was very obvious to me that there were two perpetrators. That was really kind of what pushed us over the edge. And so they made the call to take Demon and Hausner in custody. We finally got them, but we had a long road ahead of us still. The picking of who you interview first is probably one of the most important things that you can do. You want to try to figure out who's the leader. And you want to go with the weaker link. And you kind of try to exploit that. I thought that Dietman, with his larger stature, his propensity to violence, would probably be the ringleader. I decided to go to Dale first. I'll do more than I don't have anything I want to know about. Okay. And I'm talking to you because, you know, he's, unfortunately, you've been sucked into this hurricane that I'm calling Sam Demon. He thinks I'm honestly looking at Sam. That's the whole goal. I will take the focus off of Dale, and I'll put it all on Sam initially. If Sam is doing this, why would he do it? To strike fear, maybe to make people afraid of you, or to, in a sick way, boost yourself up. Sometimes I'll say, you know, when watching on TV, and I'll say, man, that's what you get when you walk down the street, 3 a.m., man, someone's gonna drive and shoot you, and you ask people, just don't listen, you know? People take it as a joke. That's basically him admitting that that's exactly what motivates him. He's clearly narcissistic and he wants to create an unbelievable fear and anxiety in the whole metropolitan area. I started to think to myself, okay, I may have gone in to the wrong interview first. Sammy. Yeah, how you doing? Uh, I have to sleep. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to wake you up a little later, okay? We gotta crack Sam if we're gonna have any chance at cracking Dale, because Dale's not gonna give it up. Um. I guess the best place to begin this case is just by being honest about um, everything that's going on. Um, 
you've been implicated in, in a crime, but ever, there's always two sides to every story. Yeah. Do you have any idea why you're here? Uh, yeah, I believe it would be the serial shooter case. And why would you, why would you think that? I think I know the guy that's been doing it. I'm staying with the guy that's been doing it. It was like getting a, a blast from a fire hydrant right in the face. Because I'm like, oh my god, this guy's going to talk. If you would, just, I'm going to let you speak, so go ahead. And, you know, I'm trying to remember when it was. I was going to come spend the night at Dale's house. And Dale would come pick me up. On the way over to Dale's place, he's like, "Well, sit, sit back." I'm like, "All right, why?" And the window starts going down, and he just kind of lays a shotgun up over there, and I just hear this pop, and here this guy starts screaming on the road there. Okay, let me back up a second. He's driving. You're in the passenger seat. Is that this? I mean, hey, I've never driven this car. You're always in the passenger seat. Correct? I don't think anybody's ever been in the car. And what does Dale do after he fires? Chuckles a little bit and has a gun down beside his leg there. Kept driving. And when he did this, did you say anything to him? I just looked at him for a second. Tried to not let him see me looking at him. That's about it. Just kept looking forward. Okay. Hey, right, Dale. My name is Darren Evans, Texas with Gaines PD, okay? You remember the Texas Dolls are with Scottsdale? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I would like to get, give you the final opportunity to come clean with some details. Okay. Uh, I don't know. What else you guys want from me? He stayed so stoic, and it, none of it seemed to phase him. We needed an emotional response as our last resort. I thought, I'm just going to go for the juggler. We're going to have to get kind of graphic and attack him. It is definitely a risky tactic. Either he's going to confess, or he's going to lawyer up. You have no remorse. You are a classic sociopath. You have no remorse for what you've done to all these people. You don't give a about anybody but yourself. You are a classic sociopath. You know how many university professors are going to want to interview you? That's you are a textbook. Pervert. Look up, Estelle. You're a pervert. Okay, you got off. I'm not asking any questions. Why not? I had being disrespectful last night. No, we're meeting your definition of your self described pervert. And we finally found what really gets to you. We found the truth. And that's why you did this, just to get off, right? Do you not want to answer our questions anymore? No, I do not. No, I think I apologize for telling the program. I'll be more than happy to answer all your questions. You apologize to the family members. I wasn't frustrated at all with him lawyering up and ending the interview, because sometimes lies can be just as valuable as, as a confession. For those families who've lost somebody, there is no closure for them. But I think justice was served, and I think a community was saved, and I'm glad to be a part of that. It's the most important work I've ever done as an investigator.